In the countryside, villagers have to wait for bush trucks, indispensable links to the city. They collect goods from isolated farmers in the countryside so that they can sell the fruits of their labor at the market and take home the week's takings. Mayembo travels twice a week to the pool region of Congo. His truck is filled to the brim, but he mustn't dawdle because the road closes at 6 p.m. because of the highway bandits. As for Bong, he's on his way to the steep mountains of Panay Island in the Philippines. His jeepney was specially designed by him to negotiate particularly steep trails. And above all, not to break under the weight of the goods and their owners. Both have only one objective, to fill their vehicles to the brim. But the risk is very real for these overloaded convoys, and driving them over rough roads can quickly turn into a disaster. We're in Congo, on national road number one between Menduli and Brazzaville. Mayambo's truck brings goods collected in the villages of the pool region. His boss likes him as a driver, because he always fills his truck well and doesn't waste any time. Some drivers earn 120,000 or 130,000. I earn 150,000 and he gives me a 50,000 franc bonus for each trip. That's hazard pay. A well-deserved risk premium. There are many dangers on the road, not least the rebels who sometimes attack the convoys, precisely on this road that my embo takes. The rebels come when they see the vehicle. To catch the vehicle, they hit everyone. They look for money, but we tell them we don't have it. They hit us a lot, then searched the vehicle and took the money. The Congo is emerging from civil war, and the country is still very unstable. So, to limit the risk of attack, route number one closes at 6 p.m., the curfew imposed by the military. Mayembo doesn't have long to wait. It's hard for him to combine speed, maximum loading, and smooth driving on this particularly rough road. His priority is to get his customers to their destination and avoid incidents at all costs. The region's entire economy rests on his shoulders. That's why he has to live up to his reputation as an excellent driver. In his truck, he transports farmers and their weekly harvest. We're in the truck, on our way to sell. Eggplants at the Burro Market. This is manioc, which is what we eat here in the Congo. And these are oranges. These are bananas. The farmers on board have to travel for 10 hours or so directly in the skip, sitting on their own merchandise. We leave the village to go to Brazzaville and sell our produce there. Then we return home. Customers are used to traveling like this and have no choice but to accept the dangers of the road. Nothing gives us more courage than traditional songs. Oh, 
Radio in Lingala. The convoy is only a few kilometers from the police roadblock. If it doesn't pass before 6 p.m., it will be forced to stop for the night. We're in Inkala now. The police have to check the files and permits first. Mayembo arrived at the roadblock on time. The roadblock is also a toll booth, because here, drivers have to swipe a ticket. This is the rule to save time at the checkpoint. We arrived at our destination, the Burro Market. Mayembo has made his journey without a hitch. And that's never a foregone conclusion. I'm really very happy. I arrived in Brazzaville safely, and there were no incidents en route. I'm really happy. I'm finished now. Mayembo's work is now done, and it's up to the truck's crew to take care of the rest, including helping the last passengers off. Go and see Mom. Okay. Back home for Mayembo. He brings back a pack of manioc for his wife, bought in the countryside at half the price of the city, one of the advantages of the job. Tonight he'll be warmly welcomed. As for the crew, they'll be watching over the goods all night until the next morning. In the Philippines, the emblematic vehicle is the jeepney. It's a converted jeep. They are used as collective cabs, but also as transport trucks in rural areas. Robust and powerful, they nevertheless need to be reinforced so as not to bend under the weight of excessive loads. Jeepney transport is really limited. Sometimes passengers can't travel with us because there's too much cargo. That's why we're always overloaded. Even if you tell them not to get on, they won't listen. We're on Panay Island, the granary of the Philippines. Farmers have to cross treacherous mountain roads to sell their produce. It's Junwen Kagalita, nicknamed Bong, who transports them in a jeepney specially designed for extreme road conditions and colossal loads. Bong drives the only truck that can take them to Leon's vegetable market. We're already well over our capacity limit. This is normal for us. The more we load, the more money we make. But the more Bong loads his truck, the greater the risk of accidents. According to our license, we can't carry more than three tons. Bong drives a jeepney with about 10 seats, but the number of passengers is much higher. There are around 50 passengers, not including children. 50 passengers who depend on Bong's expertise and the reliability of his truck. That's why we've modified these vehicles. They have to be sturdy because you can't avoid overloading them. Driving on this type of road requires a great deal of dexterity. Of course you have to hold the steering wheel firmly. 
When I feel that the vehicle is off balance, I grip it tightly so I can maneuver well. Bong keeps his eyes on the road but never forgets his load. I have to make sure that the merchandise is safe and that the passengers don't fall off. That's my concern, it's for their own safety. I have to make sure they're sitting on something stable and strapped in. Bong knows the road well and has been making the journey from Bulwang to Leon Market for 10 years, sometimes several times a day, but he remains vigilant at all times. The typhoon of 2013 severely damaged the island and its road network. Bong's journeys are always perilous. I have to stay focused and always watch the road. I also have to keep an eye on the engine noise. The last thing I want is for it to stop working on an uphill slope. It's possible that the Jeep won't make it up a steep hill. It would start to move backwards and the brakes wouldn't be able to stop it. If such a thing happened, the passengers would be in danger. Everything would happen very quickly. We just have to pray we didn't fall into the ravine. At the slightest false move, Bong knows that he and his passengers are headed for certain death. We can't just let any driver drive the jeepney. Here, on these mountain roads, you need experience, because they're very dangerous indeed. Bong comes to a difficult passage. The road is steep, and there's a river to cross at the end of the descent. He asked the passengers to get out and follow the vehicle on foot. You must always be aware of the danger. I'm responsible for the goods and my passengers. The passengers don't mind walking. They're used to it and know that Bong does it for their safety. The mountain roads here are no picnic. The next morning, at the Burrow Market, Mayembo's truck is a hive of activity, and Dalvin, the assistant mechanic, has taken good care of the merchandise. Right now, we're selling the merchandise. Then we're off to the garage. Fruit and vegetable sales are about to come to an end. It's 10 o'clock, time for Mayembo to get back to his truck and crew. He makes sure that everything has gone smoothly this morning before parking his truck at his warehouse. But before he starts, he has to check everything. Mom, sorry. I'll open the hood and check the engine oil and radiator water. Otherwise, I won't be able to start the medium. The Moyen is the name we give to trucks in the Congo, because without it, nothing would be possible in the country. As he didn't give me a cloth, I'm going to wipe it on this, on his clothes, because he didn't give me a rag. Dalvin didn't take a cloth. He didn't really have a chance to take one because he didn't leave the truck all night, but Mayembo doesn't want to know that. Now that's it. These are the levels. Now I can start on the medium. He didn't give me a cloth, so I cleaned my hand on his clothes.
I'm fine. It's going really well. All the lights are green, but Mayembo is taking his time. He knows he has to cherish his truck if he wants it to last. I can't accelerate, otherwise I might sink the engine. I have to wait for it to grease up and then accelerate. Off to the garage. Usually before going there, Mayembo goes through the car wash, but not today. We wash these here. We don't want to wash it today, we'll only wash it on Sunday. Mayembo has to wait two days for cash because he's given most of his passengers credit. They haven't paid yet. They have to pay and we have to do the accounting before we can wash the boat. Mayembo has two days rest ahead of him before heading back to the bush. So he's just going to enjoy his family. Here, I'll take my bananas. That's my wife. These are my two sons. Hello. This is my little brother. Hello. My mother is over there with my father. At Mayembo, three generations share the same house. Being a chauffeur is a privilege, and his father taught him his trade. They're my parents. I'm very proud of my son, because everyone knows he's a good driver. He's never had an accident, he's strong. Even his friends say so. He's just started, and he's already driving the big truck. The trade comes from the father. If the father drives well, he'll drive well too. For a driver and his family, accidents are a real dread. Because when they do happen, they are often dramatic. Mayembo knows the biggest dangers to avoid. The most dangerous is certainly tires when they burst if you drive fast. The truck can fall over. So you have to drive slowly. I've already seen a truck that fell over there in the Bangu forest before Kindamba. The tire burst. The truck fell with people. There were no deaths, only injuries. Back on Panay Island, Bong can now cross the river. Fortunately, it didn't rain today. High water in this part of the country can be devastating. Trucks sometimes get stuck or worse, swept away by the current. This is a daily occurrence for drivers like Bong. I've already been stuck here for three hours. Passengers climb back on board. Other travelers take the opportunity to climb in and make room for themselves, adding to the overcrowding. Bong and his assistants have to distribute the weight to prevent the vehicle from tipping over. Tell them not to sit on the baskets. The ones in the back are okay, but the kids in the middle need to move to the back. Go to the back for now. Kid, be careful, stand back, or your head might touch an electric wire. 
Do you want your head cut off? We have to walk between five and six hours to get here with our vegetables. These are green onions. The rest are probably already loaded on the truck. We'll sell them at the market. Bong knows this road best, and he's the only one who comes here. I grow cabbage and bring it to market to sell. It's not just our vegetables we're transporting, it's us too. Bong then makes sure that everyone pays for their place, and the cost of transporting the goods. From Kamandag to Leon, it's 50 pesos per person. For the merchandise, it's one peso a kilo. A commodity that earns Bong a lot of money, since each trip brings its own share of vegetables. Today we'll harvest maybe 4,000 pesos. You have to deduct 20% for maintenance, so 800 pesos, leaving three 200. I'll earn about 640 pesos. 12 for 12 hours work doesn't sound like much, but for Bong, it's double the average wage in the Philippines. Bong's overloaded truck arrives at the Leon market without a scratch. Nothing has fallen off, neither goods nor passengers. They come to sell radishes, cabbage, onions and ginger. It's time to do business, and if the farmers can do it, it's thanks to Bong. Bong's assistants help passengers unload their vegetables. We all depend on him. He brings our merchandise here, even when there's a cyclone. Night falls on Leon. Bong has to make his way home. He'll have to drive for a few more hours. The whole team will rest. Tomorrow, they'll have to tackle another difficult journey with a truck that's far too heavy. Even if today has gone well, the next trip won't, and Bong knows that. And Bong knows it. Back to Buro Market. The Mayhem crew prepares to leave for the bush. But so as not to leave empty-handed, they load all the parcels from the townspeople bound for the countryside. The parcels are recorded in the notebook. We note the number, the name of the village and where the parcel is to be delivered so that it doesn't get lost. The Mayembo truck provides every possible service, starting with banking services. There, he sends his money to the person who sent the product. It costs 5% of the total amount to send the money. All kinds of packages are handled, from a simple postal parcel to a heavy goods parcel. But don't worry, we've got everything under control. The parcels are scrupulously noted, with the customer's name, the addressee, the village and the transport rate. Packages weighing less cost 500, while large but light packages cost 1,000. Smaller, heavier packages can cost up to 2,000. Where's the scale? You can imagine there's no scale. We don't have a scale. Ten o'clock, time for Mayan boat to go on duty. This time, Dalvin had time to plan his rag. I've already checked the trucks. Everything in the vehicle, the wheels, the transmission, everything, now it's good. 
Now we're off. No time wasted this morning. My Embo and his crew have a 10 hour drive ahead of them. As soon as they leave the city, my Embo passes truck wrecks. He's broken down. I won't break down on the road, I won't. What are you going to do about it? We're going to check the engine oil. But no sooner had Mayembo reached the runway than he had to stop and finally had a bad feeling. He hears an abnormal hissing sound. We've seen a leak. I think oil is leaking from the engine. The breather is leaking. This is where all oil goes. The leak is significant, and the risk of tightening the engine is very high. I'll have to call the boss first. Hello, boss. Audio in Lingala. Yes, boss. What does the boss say? He says we have to turn back, otherwise we'll damage the engine. We have to unload the parcels. We'll put them in another vehicle. Then we'll go back to Brazzaville. Mayembo is completely disheartened. He, one of the country's best drivers, finds himself stuck on the side of the road and his passengers leave the truck. And his passengers leave the truck without further ado. Now they have to find another truck to pick up the goods and take them to the right port, where they belong. He doesn't answer the phone. I have to insist. Until we find a solution, Dalvin gathers his strength. It's 4.30 in the morning in the Philippines. Time for Bonguet and his assistants to hit the road. Two hours separate them from Bulwang. That's when they'll be able to take their first customers up. I love driving in the mountains. The scenery is superb. Everything you see is green, which helps reduce stress. You also see beautiful rice paddies and plantations on the side of the road. There's rice and radish. As you can see, they grow very well. Bong will deliver these radishes to the market. The road to get there is treacherous and requires private vehicles. Jeepneys abound in the Philippines, but Bong's is different. It has been specially modified to cope. The mountain roads of Panay Island. Bong wants us to meet John John, his elder brother. He's the owner of the trucks and a mechanical wizard. As a family, they have devised a very special way of transforming their vehicles. We have three vehicles created by my brother. We buy the materials in town and assemble them here. My brother is very ingenious. He makes the structure and shape of the jeepney. 
Right now we're working on a model like this. Building a jeepney takes a lot of resourcefulness. All the materials used in its manufacture come from Japan. Made to measure trucks worthy of haute couture. Cardboard is used to make the patterns. Bong has been around jeepneys for a long time. He's always known and admired them. I grew up here in Durog, in this garage. I first worked as an assistant. The driver would let us try out the truck. The first jeepney I drove was a passenger-only vehicle, designed for city use only. This type of jeepney can be used in the mountains. It's a little different from city jeepneys. The mechanics of city jeepneys have nothing in common with mountain jeepneys. Bong knows that nothing can be overlooked. The first step was to look for heavy-duty vehicle parts. Parts that can withstand the steepest inclines and heights. First and foremost, a suitable suspension system. The leaf springs are very thick. A versatile transmission. We have high speed and low speed. No matter how heavy the load. A robust structure. Here we've reinforced the roof to support the weight of the merchandise. Finally, an ingenious cooling system. This is the water tank. It prevents the jeepney from overheating when traveling on mountain roads. All Bong has to do is open the valve and the water flows into the radiator. It's a technique made in the Philippines. Filipinos are very ingenious. Filipinos are very efficient mechanics, which seems to be less the case for the Congolese. On the side of the road, Mayembo has a leaking engine and still hasn't found a truck to replace it. Nevertheless, he decides to return to Brazzaville, hoping to come across a truck. Yesterday, we had done everything, but it's hard to look inside the engine. We'll go back. Audio in Lingala. Mayembo has just come across a driver he knows well. He's used to taking the same road as him. In two minutes, the arrangement is complete and the transfer is made on the spot. Metan, Mayembo's controller, will accompany the new convoy. He'll make sure that the registered parcels arrive at their destination. All set! Joseph is the driver of the new convoy. Like Mayembo, he doesn't want to waste any time and has to get to his destination as soon as possible because it's going to be a long day tomorrow. We're at the beginning of the dry season, and visibility is very poor as soon as another truck is in front. We're blinded by the dust, which really bothers me. The dust gets into our noses and eyes. You have to make an effort to pass. Joseph wants to overtake, but the driver in front has no intention of making an effort. He mustn't miss an opportunity to overtake. First stop, a few cans need to be dropped off. Joseph runs to the hut to wash his hands. I washed them to be able to hold the steering wheel properly.
My hands are all clean. When I hold the wheel, it sticks to my hands. Clammy hands used to slip. Slippery hands can cause accidents, especially on tricky stretches of road. For Joseph, it's a race against time. He has to arrive before dark if he is to rest for his journey the next day. So he has his little tricks to cheer himself up. To keep his strength up. I do this with the last finger and stick it up my nose. It feels good. If I do it, it's to open my eyes. I feel tired, it's to raise my spirit. You have to take the traditional tobacco. Night falls on the Pulet Joseph region. Now it's dark. These are my friends. Last stop before the last 30 kilometers. A good opportunity to relax and hydrate the gullet. It's all right. I've driven the people well. There's no problem. We're off to our destination. Joseph finishes his journey on the country lanes with a smile on his face. Is that it, Joseph? It's a long way. Here, in this last village served by trucks, Tradition is to celebrate when a crew stops off. So Joseph has no choice but to join in the dance. The villagers form a circle in which each dances in turn and invite someone of the opposite sex to take their place. Joseph is not about to go to bed. In the Philippines, it's already morning and it's time to finish loading the jeepney. Bong is accompanied by three cargador, assistants who help him load and unload the merchandise as well as managing the passengers. Next to me is my cargador, nicknamed Barkley. I'm his son's godfather, and we're very good friends. Most of the cargadors are young and will become drivers in their turn. This is Philip Cabanas. He's man enough to carry goods. And there's plenty to lift. Onions and radishes are the heaviest. We try to distribute them evenly throughout the vehicle. Being a cargador is the hardest part. Cargadors lift very heavy loads every day. The bags weigh 50 or 60 kilos. We carry around 40 a day. Two people are needed to lift the bags and another to receive them on the vehicle. Bong also helps out, placing the bags according to their weight. We're going to run out of steam. After a day like that, we need a massage.
Bong has to stop on the way, and his passengers will have to wait. We've just told him that one of the jeepneys has broken down. It's one of our trucks. Marlon, one of our drivers, has a small problem with the suspension of his jeepney. But he'll be able to load the merchandise and make one last trip. After delivering his goods, he'll go to the garage for repairs. Bong will make the remaining deliveries. The Kagaliteni brothers never let their customers down. I'm proud because we're the only ones to offer them this service. Reputation is essential for Bong. He has to give his customers as many guarantees as possible, starting with irreproachable conduct. I'm really lucky. In six years, the only accident we've had was when one of our cargo doors got his hand tangled in the rope we used to tie up the goods. Bong knows he's never safe from an accident, and he's still got a long way to go. In the Congo, it's Joseph's turn to start his day. In the early morning, in the village of Luomingali, the women prepare a breakfast of manioc pancakes. Meanwhile, after a short night, Joseph gets a rude awakening. I'm aching, we're in pain. The truck is due to leave at 7 a.m. Everyone finishes their preparations to be ready on time. Today, the crew knows that the truck will have to be filled to the brim. So we take all the necessary measures. We have to add the picket because the merchandising has to reach this level. There's nothing there yet, so we have to add the stone. We set up the few goods but Joseph is already showing his impatience. It's an 11 hour drive. Not one more, or they'll be stuck at the police station, which closes at 6 p.m. So Shakari do it to be as quick as possible. The whole early morning passes without a hitch. The speed is good and the loading rate perfect. In the late morning, things get complicated. The prices charged by Joseph's crew, the villagers are not going to be happy. Twenty-five hundred for a bag of cassava? Three teas yet. No, make it twenty-five hundred. And you, why three thousand? We're not going to give you another 500 like that. It's manioc like the other one. It's whole. Troisième franc. No, there are five packs of raw manioc. Why are you doing this? Come on, 2,500, not 3,000. Okay, 2,500. The controller gives in. There's no question of wasting too much time. Time is money. Last stop before the police station. But this is the most important. Live animals, crates of beer, empty cans, everything is taken away. The truck's overload has caused the chassis bed to move. The risk of accident is very high. 
It's a constant danger for all of us. So there has to be a wedge to hold it in place. It's with a simple wooden block that Joseph will secure his truck. A wedge that must support several tons of men and goods. As soon as the last bolt is tightened, he's off again. The wooden wedge seems to be holding. It had better be, as there are many tricky passages and the truck is forcing its way in from all sides. In Extremis, Joseph passes the police station and arrives in Brazzaville at nightfall. I prayed to get to Brazzaville. God made it possible for me to get to Brazzaville. It's all thanks to God. Without him, I wouldn't have got here. Is that tobacco? It's thanks to God, but perhaps also to his tobacco, that Joseph arrived at his destination on time. He'll be able to share his recipe with Mayembo. That's solidarity in the Congo. Back to the Philippines. Bong now has to take care of Marlon's deliveries. The broken down driver. He has to take his own route. It's been a long day and he's getting tired. But Bong has no choice but to finish his last delivery. Bong's truck is a little less loaded, but the dangers are still there. Keep an eye on the road. Marlon's route is difficult and requires caution. Bong's experience is put to the test, and he sends Barkley out as a scout. When you're driving around here, you have to be very alert and keep a constant speed. You have to be used to driving on these roads to avoid accidents. The slightest mistake can have very serious consequences. Bong has every interest in being careful. His career as a driver is at stake. If we have an accident, our name will be blacklisted by the transport office. If the accident is serious, you could even be charged with dangerous driving. There's no question of Bong losing his license or going to prison. Better safe than sorry. We have to check our jeepney constantly to avoid any accidents. Bong's efforts have paid off. He is a driver who is respected and loved by his customers. He has a special relationship with his passengers. Bong is the one you do business with. We always travel in his jeepney, and he brings us back when we're in town. No matter what merchandise we have, he'll gladly load it onto his jeepney. Bong makes his work a matter of honor. No danger can stop him from delivering his goods and getting his passengers to their destination. The farmers know that it's thanks to his courage that they earn their living, and that the drivers who travel these roads are nothing less than heroes. I like modifying jeepneys driving for a living, and help the people here. If it weren't for me, it would be very expensive for them to get their vegetables delivered. Without our jeepneys, there would be no Philippine economy. Bong knows he'll have to continue driving overloaded jeepneys. 
but the attention he pays to the safety of his passengers and the energy he deploys to build sturdy vehicles ensure that he can skirt danger and master it. Mayembo, for his part, will also have to drive and deal with the dangers of the road with his truck, but his prudence and mastery prevent him from falling into traps. Bong and Mayembo are two drivers who will never cross paths, yet they share the same code of honor to take care of their passengers at all costs.